Hi everybody, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. If it is your first time joining me on this platform and um, on this channel, I want to let you know that I share topics on faith, spiritual growth, spiritual maturity, inspirational messages, and whatever else the Holy Spirit leads me to do on this platform. So I'm really happy to be back with another video and as you can see by the title already, that's what we're going to be talking about. If this has been something that you've wondered about or that you have, you not maybe you've never even really thought about it, I'll be so glad to go a little bit deeper and to make it clear, like, are these things important, man? What are the dynamics to them? And so um, without further ado, <laughs> Oh, and ensure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you do not miss any faith-filled topic that I'll be sharing in the future. So, let's get straight into today's video. Alright, so you guys, I wanted to talk about this topic. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but I believe that within this climate that we're living in today, with everything that's going on where everybody, you know, well, well, I can't say everybody, where there's a lot of, um, a lot of questions about faith and I think that this is one of those questions that stem up um, maybe in your life too but you never really thought about it too much um, for me I did think about it at one time in my in my um, walk with Christ and um, I still see today as a, a big thing that needs to be addressed and so that topic that I'm talking about is can a simple prayer really save my let's talk more about that and so I want to start off, as you know I always do, I'm Bible-based over here. We talk mainly Bible. And so if you don't have your Bible as yet, you know what I always say. Get your Bible, get you a pen, get you a notebook. Listen, and for those of you who say, oh, I don't have a Bible, your phone has a, like, there is Bible apps out there. You don't even have to spend money to buy one or to get access to the scripture. Google is always there, you know, the 21st century, we Google everything. So get yourself in the Word of God, okay? No excuses. So get your Bible, get a pen, get a notebook, and take some notes about what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So can a simple prayer really save my soul? Well, I'd like to take you to Scripture. So I want to take you to the book of Romans, all right? In the book of Romans, particularly chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10, I'll share both verses with you. This is, this is what it says. It says, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from dead, from death, you will be saved, right? And verse 10 says, for it is by our faith that we are put right with God. It is by our faith that we are put right with God. It is by our confession that we are saved. So when we think about the salvation prayer and going to God and asking Him into our hearts, it is not so much the prayer that saves the soul, it is the sincerity of the prayer and the faith that goes with it. Now, we know that a prayer is a spiritual thing. A prayer is, you cannot see, like when we close our eyes to pray, we're praying to an unseen God. Some of us don't close our eyes, but faith, helps us to pray, right? And so the scripture in Romans, um, it, it helps us to make sense out of why a, why a salvation prayer, why the prayer of salvation really um, would save somebody's soul. Why, why would this activate in us the grace of Christ, right? And so um, you might say, well, what is really faith? Or I don't have faith then. What if I say the prayer and I, I just don't believe, I just say it. Well, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing not just anything. It doesn't come by you hearing, um, you know, rap music. Faith does not come by you um, listening to gossip or listening to, you know, anything, just anything. Faith comes in one way and it comes by the word of God. That is what's in the Bible. So we're going to turn there. It's in Romans 10 and verse 17. You don't even have to turn your Bible. It's just right there. And this is what it says. So then faith comes from hearing the message and the message comes through preaching Christ. All right. This right. I'm reading from the GNT um, version, but it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Hearing God's word because 
like literally that's where faith comes from so when can a simple prayer really save my soul yes when it is prayed in faith when you actually confess with your mouth but in your heart you actually believe that it is true yes you're absolutely saved i am a product of saying the salvation prayer and am i saved uh, yes <laughs> okay so i want you to be aware that a simple prayer for, for those of you who might be skeptics and this is mainly for the unbeliever this part of the of the the video is of is for unbelievers that might be saying well i don't really believe that a prayer can really save myself like is that it just to have eternal life are you serious just one little prayer well it's not just a simple prayer it's a it's a prayer made in faith and that's a powerful weapon Okay, the prayer made in faith, according to the book of James, it actually um, forgives sins and it also heals the person that is sick, all right? Prayer moves mountains. And yes, the salvation prayer does save a soul, the soul that believes, though, the heart that believes. The sincerity of the prayer, is that that is what saves a person's soul. So... Yeah, that's the first half of the video. So let us address this. So the second question today is, well, how many times? How many times do I have to say the salvation prayer? Now, this is for the believer, okay? The young believer, particularly the young in the faith. This is for you because I know at some point in your life, you will want to know, whoa, do I have to say this prayer every week? Do I have to say it every day? Do I have to say it every week? Do I have to say, did I say a week before? Whatever. Do I have to, how often do I have to say the salvation prayer? Like if I've said it, I've asked Jesus into my heart. Now, do I have to say this every day? Right? As, uh, and I think that it's a real good question to answer because in today's world, um, you know, we see so many, so many, you know, so many ministries and people, you, they always say the salvation prayer after every message. Um, and, and, and it's just kind of, it could be kind of confusing for you as a young believer. So I wanted to address that topic. How many times do I have to say the salvation prayer? Like how many times do I have to get saved again? Like, <laughs> and so I want to talk to you guys about that. Now we do not have to say the salvation prayer every day. You don't have to say the salvation prayer every week. You don't have to say the salvation prayer any longer than you said it the first time. God is not deaf. There's a scripture that says, um, he who created the ear is not deaf, all right? I think it's in the Old Testament. I'll put it on the screen as I remember it. And um, yeah, so when you pray the salvation prayer, you actually believe what you're saying and you actually receive salvation. That's a spiritual thing. It's God's grace through Christ that saves you, right? And saves me. So um, we don't have to say the salvation prayer another day. We don't have to say it because we've already been saved. I think the confusion comes in is when we fall into sin or temptation and we feel like we're no longer worthy of God's, of God's salvation, right? We feel like we're no longer worthy to come into God's presence and we feel like we've messed up too big time and we need to now go and say the salvation prayer again. Now, this is where I am so glad that I'm able to share this video because I want to clear up the clouds and make it very simple and straightforward for you. As believers, we are not perfect. We are being perfected every day. We have a life to live. We have to take up our, we have to take up our cross, as the Bible says, and follow Christ, all right? This means you, yes, you're, 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 um, you're very much prone to sin in a day, but I'm not saying you're trying to sin, all right? Please hear me. You're not trying to sin. Maybe here and there you realize within your day, wow, I did something that I, I know is not good. Or maybe the Holy Spirit taps in your heart and he says, okay, that was not like, that was not me. That was not me. And that was all you. And the thing is, you, we don't need to ask God to save us again. What we really need to do is repent, repent, which is confess and say, okay, wow, Lord, I really messed up today. I lied about this or, you know, I, um, I did this certain thing or whatever. And you feel condemned when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Okay. So therefore there's a new way to handle your sins. And so you have to go to God. I want to share with you what the scripture says in the book of first john chapter 1 and verse 9 it says but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that's what god does every time we mess up and does god get tired hmm. i'd like to share with you what um 
what Peter asked the Lord. He said, uh, Lord, how many times must I forgive my, my brother? You know, if he sins against me once, twice, thrice, do I have to forgive him every time? Like, is it just seven times I must forgive him? He was talking about the law at that time. But Jesus was like, I tell you, you must forgive him 70 times, seven. So if God can give that to a human, if he can tell a human being, right, like me and you, to forgive our friends, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters that hurt or offend us, how much more is God's grace and forgiveness to you whenever you fall into temptation? He forgives you eternally, okay? But there is a way for you to not feel condemned. That's what he wants. He doesn't want you to be feel condemned because he knows that sin makes you feel condemned. Especially when you are, like, sinners don't feel condemned. They don't really have a conscience, right? But when you have the Holy Spirit, he will let you know when you have fallen short. And you do not want to displease God as a believer, right? So he will tap it. He will make you, he will make you aware. If you're sensitive, listening to his spirit, he will make you aware that, you know, there's something that needs to be done here. And that, and the thing that you need to do is just confess, just say you're sorry, mean it and ask God to give you help and grace so that you do not do the same things over and over. Ask him to help you wherever you are weak. That's where I think we get it confused as to we lost our salvation verse you know we just need to repent because we fell short in one area or the other so you guys i hope that these two addressing these two questions have really um brought, brought some hope and brought um you know a, a little brought you a little bit closer in your knowledge and, and your faith walk with christ so i wanted to say or share these um these this topic you know, even for me, I shared for me too. So I can also remember just the beauty and the grace of salvation through Christ. So I want to say, you guys, thank you so much for watching my video today. And I hope that you will join me as I come back on the platform to share with you another topic. Now, if this has been of any importance to you, then leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share the video to someone who you think might need to hear this, you know. And I will catch you in my next video. Love you guys so much. Bye.